Hi everyone, in this video, we're gonna show you the basic controls of a telehandler. Check this out. Hey everyone, in this training video, we're gonna go over the basic controls and how to operate a telehandler. So, uh, as I say with all my videos, first of all, I'm not claiming to be an expert. Uh, so you guys, any of you operate these daily, please comment below, give us your tips and tricks. Second piece is we've already done our pre-op inspection on this machine. We've got a separate video on that as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the equipment. Okay, before I get in this telehandler, today we're running a CAT TL943D. Now, not all model numbers are exact with different manufacturers, but for CAT, the nine, the first number represents the lifting capacity, the max load. So this is a 9,000 pound rated telehandler. And then the second, that 43 is the reach. So it's got a 43 foot reach. So those, you can look at a CAD, if you see those model numbers, you can roughly see how much it can lift and how far out it can reach. Now with that said, getting in the machine, as you've seen with others, three points of contact anytime you're getting in or out of any equipment. Okay, and then seat belt. Okay, so again, a CAT TL943D. First thing you do is we fire it up. Okay, once we get it started there, now we're letting everything boot up here. I'm seeing if there's any error codes. This one actually does have a service message on it that we're aware of, uh, but seeing if there's anything else obvious on the machine. Now. I'm gonna go over basic controls on this machine. What I've noticed, uh, telehandlers are one of those ones, you know, excavator, bulldozer, wheel loader. I usually say the controls are pretty much the controls, meaning they don't really change what your left hand, right hand does. I've noticed with telehandlers, they get, there's a lot of variation in them. So you're really gonna have to, I always recommend checking your manual first, um, things like that. Now, again, we did our pre-op. A couple of things, there's gauges in a telehandler that are really important to know. On the side of the boom arm there, there is your boom angle. So that's something to either catch in the pre-op or I can see it right there. You wanna make sure that's uh, free hanging and the gauge is there so I can basically be able to tell what angle my arm is at. Uh, the second piece is above my head here is my, and you may not see this on camera, but there's a level that tells me if the, uh, if the telehandler is level or not. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure those are you know, working. You're gonna need those. There's also markers on the side of the boom arm as I go out. All those pieces, because a telehandler is a material handler, there's a lot of issues with center of gravity. So that's a, you can get a lot of trouble in a telehandler if you don't know the different weight components on one of these machines. The final piece of that is most all of them will have a little manual right here that's mounted to the dash. And like for this one, it has different, depending on what attachment, you're gonna to wanna to know what you have on there, and I can see right here, this configuration, and it gives me all my weights, basically my center of gravity is like, what's my max reach? Some of the other machines or even options will have load sensors in them that can, might have, a, I've seen ones with digital displays up top, uh, but the old school way, just know your machine, and it's also gonna give you different limits on based on what the boom angle is, things like that. Now, for this machine, safety, I always go over first, seat belt, don't ever let anyone get tell you not to run a seatbelt in these machines. Uh, these cabs, you're in a rollover protection system, a cab, it's only gonna keep you in there if you're attached to it. So always wear your seatbelt. Uh, with these cat machines, there's a parking brake over on the left and I've got a parking symbol on my dashboard. I've also seen manual uh, parking brakes that are on the left, so that could be on your machine as well. Um, just understand those. And then you've got your, for your foot pedals, you got a throttle, just like you would in a car. This is generally like a wheel loader I run with just one foot, either because they're right next to each other. With the telehandler, you generally are gonna have to use both feet. So you're gonna have your right for that, and then you've got a brake put on your left. Uh, that's what you're gonna do, put it in neutral. You're gonna wanna be able to give it throttle for the hydraulics. So you're gonna be using both feet. Now, with the controls, uh, I'm not gonna go over every single dash component here because those will vary based on the equipment you're in. Uh, but CAT's got their climate control on the left side here. I've got a series of all my lights and warning, uh, the warning beacon, things like that. And then underneath there, I've got washers. I've got a way to release the hydraulic pressure from the lines if I had an accessory on it, lights, things like that. And then most importantly is gonna be your, there's three different steering modes on these. There's a switch right down here by my right that that's gonna how I'm gonna be able to toggle the different steering modes on there. So you're gonna wanna know all those controls. The shifter is on my left side of the steering column. 
and I got lights and turn signals, things like that on my right. And then I've got a single joystick here that I'll go over the controls in a moment. So with the joystick, your boom arm, pretty simple on these. Uh, if you pull back on this, it's gonna raise the boom arm up. So if I pull back, it goes up. And again, as simple as you pull one of these, this is no different than any other piece of equipment. If you pull hard, it'll go a lot faster than if you go slow. The other thing with these, this is where I talk about using that throttle, is if I give it more throttle, it'll go faster. Pulling back, going down. If I push forward, it brings the boom down. That's pretty much standard uh, on any single telehandler I've seen, the back and forth like that. And then you've got your extension. So the telehandlers are telescopic arms. That's why they say that. So if I wanna go out with the arm, I push that thing away, it'll extend out. This is where I give it some throttle. As I'm going out too, this is where you can see the markers. I got A, B, C, there's letters coming out. These are what I'm gonna use for my load chart later. So it's important to make sure those are on there. So out is, makes that go out. If I pull this in, it brings the arm in. Out is out, in is in. That's the only way I can tell you to help remember that. If you guys that run loaders, skids, uh, it's inherently you think that curling that's curling the bucket in, it's not how it is on a telehandler. Those are pretty standard. Now I've seen, I think uh, the, every machine I've been in, telehandler runs that way with the boom and the extension. Uh, the variation, some other pieces, then how you curl the, the fork. So on this, there's a little thumb roller here. So if I push up on that, it'll roll these forks down. And if I pull back, it's gonna roll the forks back. Now this thing will keep whatever angle you have. It's gonna hold that. So if I were to curl this up all the way, it's going to hold that as I pull this back. It's gonna hold that angle. That's why we'll talk about in the next video when we're actually transporting. It's important to get these things level, right at eye level, because you can actually see that. So that's gonna be on this cat machine, my left thumb. On the right is actually, uh, this one, I have a tilt on it. So if I go up on that, it tilts to the right. If I go down, it tilts my forks to the right. So that's gonna be one way back and forth there. Again, there's different variations I've seen with that on different joysticks. The other one, this machine doesn't have it. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit, down to driving, driving position for one of these. I usually like it up just a little bit so you can see underneath that boom arm. Uh, the other, this machine is a smaller class machine. Larger ones will have outriggers, the two big arms that are in front of the wheels that come down. Generally, those are gonna have, there's gonna be a trigger underneath here, under the joystick, that if you hold that button in and push it forward, it'll put them both. If you hold it forward, put it left, it'll just do left one. Hold it forward just right, it'll just do the right one and vice versa. That's usually how you operate the outriggers. I've also seen some other machines will actually have different uh, uh, joysticks over to the right of that that might operate those. So it really depends on the machine you're in. It's not a, there's not standard on that. So that's my right. That's all my boom, uh, stick, con uh, bucket configuration or a forks configuration. Now with my driving, again, left here, I'm going to take the parking brake off, which is the switch there. So now with this, for steering first, right now I've got it in just two wheel steering. So if I do this, see it'll hydraulically turn the wheels one way or the other, and I can see both. That's just gonna be front wheel steering. Generally, this is what you're gonna use if you are, I mean, driving, definitely at higher speeds, I recommend having it in two wheel. It just gets really weird when you're going uh, four wheel steering on a high speed. It can get out of control a little easier. So, uh, and if you don't need to maneuver uh, in a really super tight spot, two wheel will work for you. Down here is where I can configure that. If I push down on this, and I have a little indicator up in my dash that went to four wheel. Now it's four wheel steering, it does basically 360. So if I turn left, you'll see my back tires actually turn as well. And the opposite, it'll turn all four. Now it's important to shift these only when you're stopped in neutral. And then to get it back to straight, I like to look, there's a mirror on the side here to make sure there's no real indicator that's gonna let you know your rear wheels are straight, but making sure, and sometimes it's driving forward a little bit, and I can take it out of that, put it back in the middle as neutral, is going to be front wheel. Now if I push up on it, and it's angled there, it's going to be crab steering. Crab steering is basically, I can go side to side like this. So if I turn like this, it'll take both my wheels that way, and vice versa. So it lets you drive kind of at a crab angle there. So that's the steering. Uh, shifter is here, my speed, I got forward, neutral, reverse, and there's a shifter here, and it'll give my speed setting on the dash. 
The final piece is my angle of the machine. So I've got two switch on this cat with my right here that I can adjust to make it level. Again, you can't see it on the left, but there is a level indicator. This will actually adjust it up to 10 degrees, left or right. So this is how, if you are, you always want to make sure you're level before you're loading anything. So it's going to be left or right there. Of course, my air conditioning isn't working in this thing, so it's kind of toasty in here. So there is a, you can pop a window open there, but. And I'm always looking before I'm driving. Before I go, that I'm set at zero. Again, you may not see that. There's a gauge right up on top there. Okay? So those are the basic controls. And then, again, so going in forward there, if I just show you. If I go forward, I am in two-wheel steering. So, again, you'll see like that. One way or the other. And then stopping, putting in reverse. Checking my mirrors. Going backwards. And then if I go to the four-wheel steering... If I go left there, you'll see it'll just do a much put it in gear forward, night much tighter turn, one way or the other, and then I can go backwards. Same thing. And then the crab steering. If I go up on that, again it'll basically crab sideways. So it goes more at an angle of going straight and I'm crabbing over one way or the other. Okay, and then put it neutral, put park on. I'm gonna set this down. You always wanna have uh, those forks flat on the ground so they're not a tripping hazard at all. Put it in park. I can shut the machine off and get on out. Three points contact. Okay, so those are the basic controls for a telehandler. In the next video, we'll go more over on how to actually pick up and move things. Just want to cover the base controls. Want to thank Doug Speedling Construction in Hastings, Minnesota for allowing us to use their machine. And as I say with the other videos, if you are running one of these things daily, please put in the comments below. Share any tips or tricks you might have. We'll see you guys in the next video.